Hi guys, it's Mrs. C here with Cycle 3 Week 17. We ended up being on Zoom again this week, so I will try to convey to you guys what I did on Zoom and also give you some ideas for those of you who are still in the classroom. Lord willing, we'll be back in the class next week, although from what I just heard, we're expecting a lot of snow, so we will see. But we will jump right in with geography like I usually do. Um, I was able to, we're, we are using PowerPoint when we're doing Zoom, so I know some of you are using like um, Google Classroom and some other things like that because you're way more professional than I am. Um, but I will show you what I did on PowerPoint and then you can take it from there. So I went through um, on the physical features map and I highlighted each of the rivers with a different color on my map just because, especially on this physical feature map, it's a little hard to see where the rivers are and their names aren't, you know, completely along the river. So um, I wanted the kids to be able to see where they started and where they ended. So I went through highlighted them with a different color and then um, color coordinated it with the names on the map. And uh, we went through, pointed them out, traced our fingers down them. And again, I said, okay, you know, the Missouri River starts up in Montana and then it goes all the way down to Missouri and touches the Mississippi River. So just went over where they all originated and ended. And then we played a little game I called Finding Nemo. <laughs> so I took a little Nemo fish and stuck him um, on different slides on different rivers. And so they had to try to tell me what river Nemo was swimming on. So if you're doing this in class, um, I would just have your students close their eyes and you stick whatever character it is you want um, up onto your map, oh, excuse me, onto a river and then have the kids open their eyes and tell you what river your character is on. So um, as far as what it looked like on mine, there's little Nemo on the river and I did figure out how to animate him where he actually looked like he was swimming down the river, which I was pretty proud of guys. <laughs> so that's what we did for geography. We had, he swam in every river and then at the very end we reset all of the rivers. So for math, we are doing my geometry song that I pretty much always do because it's an easy song and it's catchy and it's what I know. So um, last week we learned area of a rectangle and this week we build to area of a square. So, so far our song says the area of a rectangle equals length times width. The area of a square equals length of its side squared, side squared, or S squared. Um, my kids always yell side, so that's what I yell, but uh, we will continue on and this will build for the next few weeks while we're doing all of our um, areas formulations and our circumference formulation. Um, this song is, I just look up CC Geometry song when I find it on YouTube. I will link it down below if you're wanting to use that or would just like to send it out to your parents as an extra resource. So we sang that through a few times for math. Um, if you're in class, you could give them a square to trace with their finger. You could do squares on the floor, let them jump in and out if you want to be active. All kinds of things you can do with all of these um, shapes. For Latin, um, I again put the words up, color coded them. I really like color coding. I just think it really helps the kids see the translation, see the differences in the translation, and um, also pay attention to things like the articles that Latin doesn't have words for. So when I do that, um, this is on my iPad, so it's not pulling up PowerPoint correctly, but you can see in the first sentence. Um, so I point out to them, look, this, this part there, it's green and yellow and up here it's yellow than green. And we talk about how in English we would say in him was life. But if we were saying Latin and translating it exactly, we would say in him life was. And then I pointed out also that it says, and the, and the life was the light of man that we don't have words for the, so they're in a different color. And we just take a minute and kind of point out all the differences and all the words that repeat, because we have a rot a couple times, we have wita a couple times in the sentence, and we just take a little while to look at all of those. And then I had them um, prior to our class starting run and grab their favorite stuffed animal. So they brought um, their stuffed animal, and then once we went over this a few times, I had their stuffed animal say the English, and then we said the Latin, and then we said the English, and their stuffed animal said the Latin. And we did that a few times and did it quietly, softly, or quietly and then loudly, and just went back and forth on that. So that was Latin. And then we are using the um, elements to the tune of Shake It Off. 
So I do want to point out, I, I will put the link to the song down below so that you can hear it. But I do want to remind everyone that they have updated the question that you asked at the beginning of science and they have changed it to number, element, symbol, and mass. And I think it was just element, symbol, and mass maybe last time. I can't remember. They left one of those out. So if you um, are listening to it, just know that you need to add it in and there's plenty of time in the song to do that. Um, so this week we have, and I'll attempt to sing it to the tune, I'm not Taylor Swift, let's just say that. But we have five boron B11, six carbon C12, seven nitrogen N14, eight oxygen O16. So that's what we have this week. Um, since Again, we're doing it Zoom. I wouldn't probably do this in class, although you could do, you could um, put these out on cards and mix them up and have them lighten it up or line them up. But um, I uh, just kind of had them all mixed up like this. And then I used um, the pen um, on my slides and had them help me trace, or not trace, draw lines to match up. So boron to B and B to 11 and so on. So I also pointed out to them that boron starts with B, carbon starts with C, nitrogen N, oxygen O. And so this week, they just have to remember what the um, elements start with to know what their symbol is. And then I also pointed out to them that our masses are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the numbers are just going to get bigger and bigger as we go on. So that was science this week. We sang through the songs a few times. And then... I didn't look up the user. Well, I mean, I obviously looked up the user, but I don't, didn't write down who it was. But someone has made these adorable little um, mnemonic device picture cards for them. So you have like a bore for boron, car for carbon. And uh, so I put those up there and we went over them again that way. And I will try to look up who that was. I believe it was in the CC Tutor group, so it should be shareable. But I will look that up and put it in the description box below. So for English... Last night, we kind of decided late to do Zoom, and um, so it was like a midnight harebrained idea I had because like, language was the last thing I had to do something for, and y'all, it's hard on Zoom. It's You you like can't interact with the kids the same way. I don't know how you all have been doing it all year are doing it. It's amazing. I applaud you. So I went down to my basement looking for some inspiration and also overwhelmed by the giant mess that it is. <laughs> I tried not to look at that. And I saw some of our puppets laying out. So I grabbed a whole bunch of our puppets. And when we got to English, I pretended that I had forgotten something that I needed for English. So I said, oh, just hold on a second. I'll be right back. And I ducked down. Um, I sit at my desk to do it. So I dug, ducked down below my desk where they couldn't see me. And I had all my puppets down there. And then I just popped up with a puppet. And the puppet pretended like it didn't know what it was supposed to do. And then it read the screen of what a subject is to them. And then it pretended like it got scared and ran off. And then I grabbed another puppet. And then that puppet showed up. And it did a similar thing, but, you know, in a piratey way. And it read what a subject is. And then it pretended like it couldn't find its treasure. And it ran away. And then I had cowboy puppet. And I had all these different puppets that I used. And I think they liked it. I don't know. I couldn't see their faces. I texted one of the moms and said, was that just the dumbest thing ever? Did your kids like it? And she said they liked it. So there you go. That's what I did. <laughs> um, if you don't have puppets, you can do voice sticks. You can do actions. Have them hold a pose while you're saying the sentence. There's all different things you can do. Um, you could have done, you could do that on Zoom. I just... I don't have a ton of space where I am doing it, so I wasn't. I didn't want to try to, um, you know, like stand in a on one leg and do all that and fall over and knock my computer off. So that's what we did for English. For history, y'all know what I did. I'm sure you do. But I got really techy and I figured out how to put the song on the slide. I was pretty excited about this because last week I just had to play it from my phone and it's the quality is not good that way. So. Um, I played the song for them, so we read the sentence, they heard it a couple times, and then of course I did silly words because again, on Zoom, there's just not a lot that you can do. Um, since I did have them have their stuffed animals, I thought about just letting their stuffed animals dance to the song, but I want them to see the words and pay attention to the words so that they're learning it. So I will tell you the funny words that I replaced so that those of you who have asked about that will know them. 
So I changed, um, I left Elizabeth the same and I changed Katie Stanton to Caveman Stan. And then Susan B. Anthony, I changed to soon to be a Tony. And then um, uh, the women's suffrage, I changed to women's suitcase. And then for United States, I changed that to Uranus Saturn. And then instead of the 19th Ant or Amendment, I changed it to the 19th Ant-Man. And then I put, instead of granted women, granted walruses, and instead of the right to vote, the right to burp, which they thought was hilarious. So um, as I do that um, on the slides, I basically just repeat my slide a whole bunch of times. And as we go through, I start off with all the crazy words in there. And then I, um, as we progress through the slides, they get replaced by the correct words. So when we get to the last slide, we have our corrected sentence and we just all say through the correct sentence when we get there. So that was history. Um, for timeline, um, I will go through all the hand motions with you and then I will try to show you the mini cards because some of you had asked about that. So our hand motions, we have Napoleon, you're gonna make an N, which is your first two fingers um, crossed over, I guess, your thumb or your thumb tucked under your first two fingers. So you have N for Napoleon, and then we're gonna make an E, which is all of your fingers sitting on your thumb, and it's gonna go from your shoulder to your hip like we do for a lot of our royalty. That's for Emperor. In France, we've got our fancy F, which you just kind of flick, okay? Then we have Liberation of South America. So you're going to make fists, but they're gonna be facing you, and then you're gonna break free, and they're gonna turn outward. So it's this motion like this. So Liberation of, and then keeping your fists like this, you're just gonna drop your fists down to show that it's South America. I don't think it's specific to America, but it's just South is what that's showing. Um, then you have the War of 1812, so war like we always do. And if you read on the back of the card of the War of 1812, it talks about how it was won in a battle and there was a lot of bombs. So we're gonna do bombs, which you wanna stack your hands like this, and then you wanna rotate them so that they're um, parallel to the ground. And you're going to kind of make a bomb and come back in. Make a bomb, come back in. So that's the sign for bomb. So you have the War of 1812, and it's kind of fast, so you have to do it kind of crazy. <laughs> and then the Missouri Compromise, um, they were thinking about things and then their thinking was the same. So you're going to line your fingers up like this. So it's kind of like your thoughts are the same. They were compromising. Um, then immigrants flock to America. So immigrants, they're doing the sign for like something going in because they were coming into America. So you're going to have one hand kind of flat like this and then your other hand's going to come in come under and in. Okay. So emigrants flock. And then the sign for America is two hands together. And then you kind of swirl it around. And they say on the timeline, like instruction video, that it is like the America is the melting pot. So I kind of think of it as like you're stirring everybody together. Okay. Uh, then we have the Monroe Doctrine. So the Monroe Doctrine was about <clears throat> excuse me, the expansion of America. So we're going to put our fists together and then we're just going to kind of grow because America had expanded from the east to the west and Europeans weren't supposed to bother any bother us anymore. So you're going to put your fists together and expand. And then we have the romantic period of the arts. And this isn't like an official sign, but the romantic period was um, known for its drama. So we're going to take our hands and kind of go down and make sad face and then up and make a happy face. If you think about the drama mask that are the really sad face and the really happy face, that's what that is imitating. So those are our signs for this week. Uh, to do it uh, for Zoom, there is... On CC Connected, there are many timeline cards. So I cannot share those. Anything that's on CC Connected can only be shared with people who have that. So since I can't verify that all of you out there watching have that, I can't share it. I will tell you that they are under the name, many timeline cards. And if you want to filter it even more, you can put in timeline in the filter box if you're on there. And the username, I believe, is E-K-S-A-C-C-E. -C -C -E. Now, I may be spelling that wrong but it's definitely EK at the beginning. So you can kind of look it up that way. And hopefully that will help you find, some of you find it. I know that you all were having, some of you were having trouble. So, but this is what they look like. They're just mini cards like what we use. So I put these all onto a slide and then I have different, um, <coughs> sorry, I have a tickle in my throat, different symbols underneath them. So 
Either this week, since we were close to Valentine's Day, I had either broken hearts or I had happy hearts. And uh, I have the kids go through and they just take turns picking a card and I click on it and the card disappears and there's a happy heart or a broken heart underneath it. And there's three broken and four happy. And so we're trying to not find all the broken hearts. If we do, it's not a big deal. We just keep going on. And um, after we get rid of one, we sing through. And so each time we're getting rid of one and we're singing through it and we're just seeing if we can remember what they all are. So uh, I my iPad doesn't have actual PowerPoint, so it won't let me show you exactly what that looks like. If you're doing it in class, I would bring in all of your cards and I would pick three cards before class starts and just put a little sticker on the back of them. It can be anything. Lay them out on the table, go through them, show the hand motions if that's something that you do, and then take turns letting the kids pick a card and then just take that card and turn it over when they pick it. If it has a sticker on the back, then oh no, we hit a bomb. And if it doesn't, shh, we're safe, we're good. And then sing through from the beginning all the way and see if they can remember all the cards that get turned over. It's super easy the first few times, but when you end up with all the cards turned over at the end, it's a good way for them to really solidify them in their memory. So I believe that's everything. We did uh, YF this week, and these are from the last time I did cycle three. So uh, watercolor paintings, just of landscapes. Um, we, I reminded them about perspective, you know, that the barn is farther away than my fence. And, um, we talked about, um, uh, the colors that he used, that there are more muted colors and that he is painting more realistic ones versus like Picasso that are all crazy colors and doesn't look real. And, um, <coughs> we are doing, especially because they're doing it at home this week, we chose to not do rubber cement and we are using white crayon instead. So if you're doing this at home, you can take white crayon and just dot all over your paper for your snow. If you want to color the rooftop of your barn or color on some trees with your white crayon, then when you go to watercolor, it should water resist and it will give you that snowy look like a lot of Wyatt's paintings have. This is one that I did with older kids. So we did a little more specific drawing but it doesn't it doesn't have to be you don't even have to put a bar and you could just do a landscape scene and you'll be fine so um I did want to point out in case what you find on Wyeth doesn't have it Wyeth was homeschooled so I thought that was pretty cool that he, we have a famous artist that was homeschooled so anyway I'm sorry this video was longer than usual I tried to talk fast and get through it quickly but uh, trying to do zoom and class stuff makes it take a little longer so Hopefully you guys are all safe and warm where you are and I will be seeing you back next week with week 18. Thanks guys.